So, Dr. Lini, what's what's your study about, and what are the objectives? It is an, un, an ongoing study, and so these are only preliminary data about a study comparing biotopic stent implantation in patients um, with common film atherosclerosis compared with uh, the open surgery. It's the interdirectomy. And uh, we used a special stand. It's a bioabsorbent stand and not the usual um, non absorbent stand with the uh, traditional stand. And we think that the uh, bioabsorbent stand has the advantage over the traditional stand that um, after biodegradation of the uh, bioabsorbent stand, uh, there is a normal human and you don't have the disadvantages of the traditional stand like internal hyperplasia, like thrombosis, like stent deformation. Uh, you have no artifacts uh, with MRI. MRI. You uh, have the possibility to uh, use the uh, CFA for further interventions because the lumen is uh, without stand. And so we uh, preferred uh, the biotopal stand over the traditional stand uh, for comparison with open surgery. Okay. And can you tell us about the device that's being used and how long does it take for kind of completely absorbed? The first, the first, uh, the first uh, bioabsorbable stand was a coronary stand uh, and it was um, produced by two Japanese uh, they called uh, they were called uh, Igaki and Tamae, and um, now there is a successor uh, of this uh, coronary stand, which is called Remedy Stand, and uh, it's uh, approved for uh, peripheral usage in Europe. And it's a uh, polymer of, uh, out of uh, polylactic acid. Bio uh, degradation uh, starts uh, at six months after uh, deployment and uh, it's a balloon mount stand uh, uh, which is introduced via a 7 French introduction sheet and you use a small guide wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, at what stage is the study at the moment? Have we concluded uh, enrollment uh, or uh, we have ongoing? now We have now um, allocated uh, 80 patients, 40 in each group and the uh, the end groups are 107 patients was from the from the power analysis. So it's a well, it's, these are preliminary results, and um, uh, we have uh, 40 patients in the stand group and 40 patients in the open group, and uh, these are one-year results. Mm -hmm. And what have you seen so far in this? So far, we have seen that uh, there are two main points. We have a significant difference uh, between the two groups uh, regarding surgical side infections and uh, regarding uh, failure of the reconstruction. We saw that, uh, and I think that's very important, we saw that uh, surgical side infections are more common in patients undergoing open surgery compared to uh, stenting. And we, uh, according to the regression analysis, we saw that uh, body mass index and uh, operation time are the only predictors uh, for uh, development of such side infections. So we can see patients uh, with, a, uh, with increased BMI and uh, with long duration of the operation uh, are uh, significantly more uh, for in the, in the group uh, with the uh, surgical side infections. Mm -hmm. So uh, these patients will maybe um, good for the stent group. Mm -hmm. The second point was uh, the, the uh, factor uh, reconstruction failure and we saw that there was, was a significant difference uh, between both groups regarding uh, reconstruction failure and that uh, point that uh, reconstruction failures were more common in the stand groups than in the uh, open group. And we saw that the one predictor of stand failure, and this was the CFA occlusion. So we can say that patients uh, with CFA occlusions would better be uh, operated, and patients with uh, CFA stenosis 
and uh, which are which have a high uh, BMI uh, would better be uh, treated by stenting. Mm -hmm. So until when are you going to follow up with these patients and when are you presenting like further results? I think in two years. In two years. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much Thank for you. your help.